standing in front of the Bose Institute or Bosu Vigyan Mandir, Kolkata along with my co-host. This complex has two portions, Acharya Bhavan which was J.C. Bose's residence and Bose Institute which continues to be a research centre. Let us probe into today's public perception about J.C. Bose and his work. Do you know who was J.C. Bose? Acharya Jagdish Chandra Bose, he's a scientist. I know him but I cannot you know, really tell who is he. Do you know what were his inventions? He had invented some scientific apparatus, but I don't exactly when I can't recall the name of the apparatus he had invented. How is your voice transmitted and received through mobile phones? Uh, by wireless connection, by microwaves, from one tower to another, the signal is caught at a particular area and then the signal is fed into uh, sound. Nitin. Well, it appears that the young generation is not aware of the work of the great scientist. I am also not aware of his life and work. I only know that he invented the radio and also said that plants are living like animals. Wrong, wrong, wrong. That plants are living beings have been known since the Vedic period or even earlier. According to J.C. Bose, the response phenomena lie intermediate between those animals and in metals. The response phenomena in plants lie intermediate between those in animals and metals. The more difficult is the task, the greater is the challenge. When you have gained the vision of a purpose to which you can and must dedicate yourself wholly, the closed doors will be opened and the seemingly impossible will become fully attainable. His contribution, he is the father of microwave, gave the world analog optic and the first microwave transmitter receiver. He reduced the waves to the millimeter level. He had realized the disadvantages of long waves for studying their light-like properties. World's first semiconductor device. In 1899, Bose presented a paper at the Royal Society of London where he explained the development of iron mercury iron coherer, which could detect telephone waves so he was the first to use a semiconductor junction to receive radio waves. This was the reason that in 1954, Pearson and Breton accepted that the Bose achieved the role of a semiconducting crystal as a detector of radio waves before Marconi, which is generally accepted to be the inventor of radio wave. In 1977, Nobel laureate Neville Francis Mott clearly remarked that J.C. Bose was at least 60 years ahead of his time. World's first experiment on similarity of response from living and non-living. Jagdish Chandra Bose was born in Mimen Singh in undivided Bengal in the mother's parental house on 30th of November 1858. In the same year, East India Company, which had been ruling Bengal since 1757, came under the crown rule. Mimen Singh is now in Bangladesh. The Bose family was originally from Bikrampur in Dhaka district, which was a popular destination for scholars. Jagdish Chandra's father, Bhagwan Chandra Bose, was a deputy magistrate at Faridpur. Bhagwan Chandra believed in culture and human values. He used to organize Mela or annual fair, where locally made articles were exhibited for sale and also organized wrestling competition and cultural programs. 
He was generous enough to accommodate a dacoit who sought for help after a jail term. Bhagwan Chandra engaged him as an attendant of Jagdish Chandra. Jagdish Chandra's mother, Bama Sundari Devi, was pious and benevolent. Jagdish Chandra had six sisters and a brother who died at the age of 10. At five, he was sent to a local vernacular school in Faridpur. Even as a boy, he had many hobbies which showed his scientific interests. He used to breed frogs and fishes in a nearby pond. He would pull out a germinating plant and observe its root system. Nature always attracted Bose right from his childhood. Bose always wanted to understand why they were flowering in the plants, why flowers produce fruits, why the leaves fell off after some time, how seeds germinated and produced new plants, etc. In Calcutta, he first attended Hare School and then St. Xavier School. From there, he passed entrance examination with scholarship and was admitted to St. Xavier College. Here, his teacher was Father Lefont S.J., who was the best experimental physicist of his generation in India. He passed F.A. examination in 1877 and graduated in B.A. examination in 1880, taking science course. In the same year, he left for England and joined a medical school. But due to Kala Azar fever, he gave up medical studies and later took science at Christ's College of Cambridge University. Here, he studied under teachers like Lord Varag for physics and Sidney Vines for botany. In 1884, he passed the natural science tripos of Cambridge and obtained B.Sc. On his return to Calcutta, he was appointed officiating professor of physics, Presidency College, where he worked for 30 years since 1885, but he received very harsh treatment at Presidency College. Bose did perform his duties, but did not accept any salary for three years. Finally, his appointment was regularized with retrospective effect and he was paid full salary for the entire three years. Thereafter, he was made Emeritus Professor. He had many scientific hobbies including photography. He recorded voices of his friends using Edison's phonograph. He married Srimati Abala Das in 1887. Abala Bose was a student of medicine when she was married to J.C. Bose. She was a good manager of household affairs. She spent money with utmost care and helped J.C. Bose in tiding over financial problems. Abilabo started school for girls in Kolkata and maintained the school herewith. I understand that you are the trustee of this Acharya Bhavan. Now, uh, the, to me, you know, this is a national treasure with all its collection, with all its furniture, all paintings, culture, the original instruments of Jagadish Chandra Bose, his personal collection, etc. Uh, I don't know how we're going to conserve it, you know, so that this uh, future generation, all generations to come, they can see and they can get inspiration from that. Now, when you talk about conservation, what is it that we want to conserve? Is it only going to be conservation of the building, the paintings, the furniture, and all the beautiful objects over here? Aren't we going to try to conserve how he thought, what kind of personality he was, what kind of message he sent out, the signals he sent out, not radio signals, the other kinds of signals that he sent out for the general public, for the, his contemporaries, and which should have got transmitted down the generations, but which somehow have been lost in the course of history. From 1896 to 1931, he went out on successive invited lecture tours to Europe and America. 
he was knighted in 1917 and fellow of Royal Society of London in 1920. Member of Academy of Science Vienna in 1928. He founded Bose Institute on 30th November 1917 for advancements in science. Acharya Bose, he constructed this, built this house rather in 1900 and since then he started living with uh, Lady Bose in this uh, building itself. Uh, it was originally a two-story building, later on it was, uh, second floor was constructed and afterwards third floor was constructed. And uh, it was mainly his residential place, but he used to meet his, all his students and other disciples over here. And the second floor was mainly his bedroom and also there is a room with all his instruments. And third floor there is a conference hall and also his reading room and the dark room where he uh, made all his slides. He used to make his own slides. He left a large number of legacies for mankind, especially the uh, Indian humanity. One of the most oft-quoted and well-known is that I dedicate today to the nation this organization which is not merely a laboratory but a temple of science. One of the very famous quotes is that here shall meet, the line, meet and converge the lines of physics and physiology and psychology and the people who should work here are the ones who would be searching for the oneness among the many people. Bose's scientific works broadly falls under three periods. From 1894 to 1899, he was almost entirely concerned with the study of electromagnetic waves. Between 1899 and 1902, he shifted from physical to the biophysical field. And beyond 1903, he was occupied with the study of plant responses under physical stimuli of various types. For these studies, he designed and developed his own instruments. College authorities did not provide any facility for research to J.C. Bose, but he continued his research in a small room. He devised his own equipments with the help of a tinsmith who had no formal training. Sister Nivedita wrote in detail about the problems faced by J.C. Bose and how through his relentless efforts he could achieve so much. In fact, J.C. Bose could prepare a device which could measure growth of plants which is very slow. But he could measure that kind of growth with his instrument. We have learned that Acharya J.C. Bose is the father of microwave. By the way, what is electromagnetic wave and what is microwave? You can easily create electromagnetic wave if you are given a source of electricity, two wires and a radio receiver. Let me show you how. I have two wires and a condenser. It could be a battery as well. I am going to create a spark. It is so easy. The cracking sound in the radio receiver has confirmed the existence of the electromagnetic waves that you have produced. Now let us take a look into the electromagnetic spectrum. Electrical signals below 100 kHz require electrical conductors to travel, whereas those above 100 kHz are classified under electromagnetic spectrum. These waves travel as radiated waves. Electromagnetic waves with 60 cm of wavelength cannot penetrate a stone or a brick wall, but 5 mm of electromagnetic wave can easily pass through the wall. Now I am really impatient to see world's first transmitter and receiver invented by Acharya J.C. Bose. Well, let's go to the Bose Institute to know more about his inventions. Heinrich Hart, the German scientist, he first proved 
the existence of the electromagnetic waves. First he made a wavelength of 960 centimeter. He, then he tried to minimize the wavelength. Finally he made a wavelength of 66 centimeter. But it was not possible for him to study the, all the quasi-optical properties of electromagnetic waves uh, with that particular wavelength. J. C. Bose made a wavelength with this instrument that is a 5 millimeter wavelength. With that 5 millimeter wavelength, he made a very, very in, uh, interesting thing. He, he studied all the quasi-optical properties of electromagnetic waves. He placed this generator in a room, suppose here, and this receiver was placed at a distance of 20 feet. There is some walls are between. He generated this thing, and after intervening the walls, uh, it was received by the receiver. He made some bombardment. He is the first man to make and to show the remote control arrangement be two years before Marconi at that time. You know what? I am really weak in science. I am afraid of science, waves and equation. But this experiment has made things look simpler. Really? Then can you design an artificial eye which will be sensitive to the whole range of electromagnetic spectrum including thermal and visible radiations? The eye will have galvanometer as the brain and two wires as optical nerves. Uh, could you repeat your question please? I said, can you design an artificial eye that will be sensitive to the whole range of electromagnetic spectrum that includes thermal as well as visible radiations? The eye will have galvanometer as brain and two wires as optical nerves. Um, I feel I can. Give me some time to think. But before that, I want to know more about detectors and polarizers. So let's go to the Bose Institute and find it out. J.C. Bose made several types of detectors. Say, this is a spider spring detector. This is one of the detectors improved kind of detector after Brownlee. This is metal contact detector. He made this thing uh, for his experiment and then he made iron mercury detector. Here is a jute fiber. This is, he also used a twisted jute polarization element uh, used for different types of polarization experiment. Difficult concepts look much simpler with these demos, isn't it? Yes. Well, well, well. You haven't answered my question on artificial eye. I shall, I shall. I need more time to think. But two questions come to my mind. First, why was J.C. Bose not awarded the Nobel Prize? And second, why credit goes to Marconi for inventing the wireless? J.C. Bose invented microwave in the year 1894-95. Whereas, Nobel Prize was instituted in the year 1901. Now I'll answer your second question. Marconi used a much longer wavelength to send a signal during his first transatlantic transmission. Marconi used J.C. Bose's iron mercury detector, but he didn't mention J.C. Bose's name. Now International Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, after investigation has confirmed that J.C. Bose is the father of wireless. Now I have a rapid fire round for you. I'll show you visuals of contemporary grades. You need to identify them. Yeah, sure. Bring it on. Um, uh, I know him. He's Father Laffer. He was the teacher of J.C. Bose at St. Xavier's College. That's true. Um, uh, I don't know him. He is Lord Kelvin. Are you really asking me who he is? He's Rabindranath Tagore. Wow, you know him, that's good. He is Acharya P.C. Roy. That's very nice. Are you really asking me who he is? He's Mahatma Gandhi on the currency. That's true. Um, I can't identify him. Okay, I'll give you a hint for this. He is GBS. GBS, GBS. Let it Sorry, be. I don't know. He is George Bernard Shaw. 
ट्रिंग ट्रिंग इट्स ग्राहम बेल दैट्स ट्रू शी इज सिस्टर निवेदिता ही इज आइंस्टाइन ई इज इक्वल टू एम सी स्क्वायर वेरी ट्रू ही इज सुभाष चंद्र बोस तुम मुझे खून दो मैं तुम्हें आजादी दूंगा दैट्स राइट इट सीम्स दैट यू आर एन इंटेलिजेंट गर्ल विद दिस वी कम टू एन एंड टू आर रैपिड फायर राउंड I want to know from you something about what has not been published some anecdotes something about his life his invention the this hidden stories that public don't know his laboratory notebook of 1883 when he was in england botany was one of his subject and in that book we find his own hand drawing of mimosa pudica we have recently uh, found a letter from father lafo Mrs Olive Bull uh, whom he used to address as darling mother apart from giving the motherly affection Mrs Bull substantially donated fund for the publication of his book and once upon a time Jesse was thought that he will repay back some of his money and they issued a check of 80 pound obviously Mrs Bull didn't accept that check and on the back of the check she wrote pay it to Abola Bush So I believe Karan Dua was also in the audience when you were lecturing in Paris. Shami ji's reaction of that meeting was clearly written by Shami Vivekanand. From among that white galaxy of geniuses there stepped forth one distinguished youthful hero to proclaim the name of our motherland. It was the world renowned scientist Dr. J.C. Bose. My elder brother who is now a scientist with ISRO was a JB and STS scholar. that is jagdish bose national science talent search jb and sts was launched by bose institute in 1958 the birth centenary year as per acharya jc bose's wishes i learned that acharya jc bose was a great institution builder but i don't know the details of the institutions he built for that we need to go to the bose institute kolkata as well as bose institute falta this gate was presented to jc bose by sir w h haley governor of punjab in 1927 acharya bhavan at falta acharya jc bose used to visit this place frequently he used to think about his work in a tranquil environment he raised many plants in the gardens around the building not far from here is tamluk which is known as tamrolipto in ancient times from here one can see confluence of three rivers bhagirathi rupnarayan and damodar tamrolipto was a very important port of ancient india as the three rivers fell into bay of bengal here sail ships used to criss cross here as they carried cargo and passengers to and from all important coastal cities of southeast asia namely burma malay Jammu Dweep, Subarna Dweep, etc. The name of this trifolio plant is Desmodium gavran or Indian telegraphic plant. It has three leaves on the same stalk. Bigger one is flanked by two smaller ones looking like two hands. These two are always moving autonomously up and down like the hands of a traffic police. One can observe this movement with naked eyes. There's no movement on these young leaves during night. However, fully grown leaves keep on moving during 24 hours. It is learned that Queen Victoria was entrusted in this particular plant, even declared reward for the person who could decipher the movement, but no scientist at that time was able to probe into the movement. Acharya Jagdish Chandra Bose recorded the movement of leaves on the instrument called plant phytograph invented by him he recorded the electric response of this plant and compared the pulsation of the plant with that of an animal heart he established fundamental similarity name of this plant is mimosa pudica acharya jc bose invented the instrument called resonant recorder to observe the velocity of excitation of the plant if mechanical or electrical stimulus given on smaller leaves could absence starts from top to bottom leaves up to node and then the response starts moving in opposite direction to another row of leaves 
Achar experimentally found that the speed of this response goes up to 40 millimeters per second. To give due recognition to the pioneering work done by J.C. Bose in the field of botany, the government of India has renamed the Indian Botanic Garden at Kolkata as Acharya Jagdish Chandra Bose Indian Botanic Garden in July 2009. We have taken a tour in the Bose Institute. Now we shall listen to Professor S.P. Sain, who is an internationally known outstanding researcher in plant sciences. Some of his experiments, uh, he used jute fiber and paper, which originated from plants. Not only living and non-living, but the distinction between plants and animals basically are also very same. And throughout his life, with many experiments, he showed tremendous unity in the diversity of plants and animals. He took a banana leaf, which is quite large, and the midrib is also quite strong, and he used a gold, uh, a gold wire passing through, through the midrib for this purpose, and then he demonstrated that light is actually generated in the lighted part and that. And this has tremendous influence today, because you see, on the world today, we have a huge number of plants exposed to light uh, energy, and so there is a possibility that we can track electricity from that. When he was in England as a student, he wrote, I have been long thinking whether the solar energy that is wasted in the tropical regions can in any way be utilized. I have been thinking whether this could not directly convert the energy of light into that of electric current. In later years, in, towards the closing years of his life, he became very much interested in consciousness, memory and storage of information. He suggested a physical model using ferromagnetic powder distributed on a tape. I would like to say that he was not only the father of biophysics and plant physiology in India or even modern science in India, he was also the father of information technology. Jagdish Chandra Bose passed away on 23rd of November 1937 in Giriti, which is now a district town of Jharkhand. Professor S.P. Sain's explanation of J.C. Bose's work on electrical responses from living and non-living, photoelectric effect, photoreceptors, photosynthesis and cybernetics will tempt researchers of today to take research on them. For that, a new generation of instruments on the lines of those designed by Acharya J.C. Bose are required. Can we look into some of Acharya J.C. Bose's instruments? You know, Acharya J.C. Bose has invented more than 100 instruments. Let us take a look. There was a general belief of the Deegan physiologist in England that if you apply shock to a particular body, if it responds electrically, that indicates life. This is a metallic wire. And it is when it is twisted, you will get some millivolt or electricity, okay? And here, a plant stem is placed here, and when it is twisted, uh, they, he got some electricity in the plant stem also. And you know, in the animal muscle, there is electricity. This is known as compound liver cascograph. Plant is placed there. It is attached with a fine silk cocoon thread to the first liver. For demonstration abroad or elsewhere, J.C. Bose also made a portable compound liver cascograph. This is a portable compound liver cascograph. Here is a plant. It is attached with a glass link to this liver, uh, to this aluminium liver. So it is attached to the pulley and this aluminium lever is so arranged that it magnifies 100 times. And there is a fine attachment with another lever that is made of glass that also magnifies 100 times. 
and therefore the total magnesium comes 100 into 100, 10,000. And there is a clock arrangement here. With this clock arrangement, this smoke glass plate moves laterally and at the interval of force against the plate comes forward and lever point is always free. So friction is minimum. It takes the dot, first dot again, after four seconds you'll get another dot. Now the longitudinal distance between the two dots, if we divide that distance by 10,000, you'll get the four seconds growth. If we, if we again divide with four, you will get the part seconds growth of the plant. This instrument is known as optical spigmograph. With this instrument, you can see the plant's dimetric changes. Plant is placed between the two edges. Uh, here is the light system. Light falls in the meter and that reflected ray goes to the scale in a center zero scale. Now there is three chambers. One is kept in drought condition here, first chamber, second chamber is with water, third chamber with poison. When you put it in the second chamber with water, when the plant suck water, diameter will increase so that light source, light point in the scale, it will again come back to the positive side. It will stop at a certain point that indicates the plant is saturated. No more water is required. Now, if you put this thing in the poison, you will see the reaction automatically. Light source will go immediately to high velocity to the negative side. It may be seen at the magnification, up to the magnification 13 million times. The name of this instrument is oscillating plate photograph. Actually, in the desmodium xyron is a trifoliate leaflet. Mid one is bigger and two other side leaflets. That side leaflet is attached to this lever and so, and there is a plate. It is a recording plate. There is an eccentric wheel on the other side. Plate moves laterally and the interval of four seconds, the plate comes forward and after taking one impression goes back. In this way, we get a pulsatory move, autonomous movement of the plant. This is the back portion of that instrument. This is Jesse Bosch's photosynthetic bubbler instrument. It was invented by Jesse Bosch probably in the year 1923 or 4. Plant is placed in this glass container. Water plants such as Hydella is given. In presence of sun, when the plant absorbs carbon dioxide and liberates oxygen, the liberated oxygen comes to this way and this limb is closed. So it will come to this way in the YouTube and it will escape. A known amount of mercury is given at the mouth of the funnel. And so when oxygen accumulates, it escapes after lifting the mercury valve. When it escapes, the mercury valve contacts with these two platinum well and completes one electric circuit. Suppose M amount of oxygen is dividing per dot. If there are 10 dots, if we know the speed of the drum, you can calculate the rate of photosynthesis automatically. The name of this instrument is Shoshunograph. Jesse Bohr first tried to name his instrument from Sanskrit word. This is known as resonant recorder. It was constructed and invented by Jesse Bosch in 1902. This instrument uh, for experiment used the plant Mimosa pulica. First, the velocity of transmission of excitation in plants. If you apply shock in a particular subpetiole of Mimosa, first that uh, shock will travel uh, to the vascular, vascular bundle first and then again return it in the other, other portion of the plant. Shocking coil is there. If you uh, make a feeble shock there, you'll see the velocity of excitation travels from one end to other end with this instrument. He measure the velocity of transmission of excitation in mimosa with this instrument.
With this instrument, he recorded at the time the plant's electrical response. With this instrument, J.C. Bose, he made a very peculiar experiment, a detached heart of a tortoise. Uh, it was placed in a ringer solution and he continuously for three, three days, uh, he recorded the heart movement with some reagent extracts which was collected by J.C. Bose. যাইতে যাইতে পূর্মাচল নামক পুরাণ কথিত দেশে উপস্থিত হইলাম তথা হইতে সরোজু নদীর উৎপত্তি স্থান দর্শন করিয়া দানবপুরে আসিলাম তাহার পর পুনরায় বহু গিরিবহন লঙ্ঘন পূর্বক উত্তরাভিমুখে অগ্রসর হইলাম সেই দুই দিন বহু বন ও গিরি সংকট অতিক্রম করিয়া অবশেষে তুষার ক্ষেত্রে উপনীত হইলাম নদীর ধবল সূত্রটি সূক্ষ্ম হইতে সূক্ষ্মতর হইয়া এ পর্যন্ত আসিয়াছিল কল্লিনীর মৃদু গীত এতদিন কণ্ঠে বর্ণিত হইল আমরা এই মাত্র আচার্য জগদীশ চন্দ্র বসুর লেখা ভাগীরথী উৎস সন্ধান প্রবন্ধ থেকে কিছু শুনলাম তিনি কেদারনাথ থেকে কেরালা পর্যন্ত ভ্রমণ করেছিলেন নিজের ক্যামেরা সঙ্গে করে তিনি পিন্ডারি হিমবাহ পর্যন্ত পৌঁছেছিলেন তার এই সমস্ত ভ্রমণ বৃত্তান্ত দাসী পত্রিকাতে প্রকাশিত হয়েছিল আঠারোশো পঁচাশি সাল তিনিই প্রথম রবীন্দ্রনাথের বাংলা লেখা ইংরেজিতে অনুবাদ করার চেষ্টা করেছিলেন তিনি ভারতবর্ষ প্রবাসী প্রভৃতি পত্রিকায় নিয়মিত লিখতেন তার এই সমস্ত সাহিত্য সৃষ্টি অব্যাক্ত নামক পুস্তিকায় সংকলিত করা হয়েছিল আচার্য জগদীশ চন্দ্র বসু ওই পলাতক তুফান নামে প্রথম সায়েন্স ফিকশন লিখেছিলেন তার এই সাহিত্য সৃষ্টির জন্যই তাকে বঙ্গীয় সাহিত্য পরিষদের সভাপতি নির্বাচন করা হয়েছিল Whose voice was this? No answer from any side? Well, it was Tagore's voice. J.C. Bose recorded Tagore's voice way back in 1905 with the assistance of his nephew, Hemango Bose. Well, what about my question on artificial eye? Sincerely, I could not answer the question. But can you design an artificial eye which will be sensitive to the whole range of the electromagnetic wave spectrum including the thermal and visible radiations. The galvanometer will be the brain and the connecting wires will be the optic nerves. If any of the student can design a working model on this, please submit the same to Directed General, National Council of Science Museums, Block GN, Sector 5, Bidhanagar, Kolkata, 700091. Email ncsmin at vsnl.com. Phone numbers 033-2357-0850-9347 and 9348. And get a fabulous prize.